Mike Gill, State of Corruption. I cannot tell you how important this video is. You've seen me do setup videos for this video. You see me delivering evidence to the FBI U.S. Attorney's Office. You see me package envelopes and said the video, let's get them all. This was mailing evidence to all agencies within the IRS and the AG's office, Sessions office. I was setting up these criminals. Why did you see that the FBI returned the package and surrounded? Why did you see the U.S. Attorney send Brian Toomey's computer and cell phone back? They are protecting the evidence that I can show you here. What do we need? Method? Motive? Well, I'm going to show you how they're doing it. I'm going to show you why. But I'm going to tell you what we can get. This, this, is, this is extortion on a federal level with the IRS. This is the corruption throughout the states. What I'm going to show you is a model of corruption between the Attorney General's office in the state, the U.S. Attorney office in the state, the, the Depart uh, Department of Revenue in the state, the Banking Department. When we said, let's get them all, this was the setup for this. I knew what we had was conclusive evidence. We don't have to improve all the other stuff. We just have to drive a nail right through their heart on this. And this is the piece that does it. This is what's worth $50 million. And we're going to go over that settlement because it's a telling statement of what they are afraid of and who they're afraid of and the path we're going to take. So let's take that path. Again, let's not make this about politics. I'm giving this to President Trump and Attorney General Sessions, regardless if it's Republicans and Democrats. This corruption is affecting all of us from the state to the federal level. I'm going to show you how we can take this down. This was years in the doing and work that I can't even begin to tell you. So let's start the motive. Ready? Walker. I caught corruption, Ponzi scheme, covering up insurance claims. What I, he did was he needed a release when I caught him, which is what he asked for. And I'm going to split screen it. You're going to see that he asked me for a full release to take care of the IRS and the DRA issue. There were issues because they're extortion issues. See? The IRS sue him, you know. Leverage them for money, DRA leverage for money, which are what they're doing still today with the DRA. It's a good thing we caught the IRS on tape. I'm going to remind you that maybe you play a snippet of it so you remember. Uh, good times, Tim. This is going to be your case. Huh. I, I got to call him, Chris, and I'm going to tell him, like, we have a plan. We have an undercover here. So we haven't heard from them. But DRA is threatening to take over the, take the, sell my properties. Let's go on though, okay? But this brings us to Walker. This is Shaheen and Gordon, and Bill Shaheen, the husband of the Senator Gene Shaheen, who has been cited for targeting enemies with the IRS. This minute when they were trying to make a deal with me, all those years before, they didn't go to the taxpayer advocate. Well, they did now, only to find out, as you can see, the taxpayer advocate apologizing for timing issues and they'll process my forms immediately. You see, they were corrupting them. They stopped them. Except for when they did this, they assumed that I'd take the 50 million. When I didn't, they got caught in the spot. Right. So then they had to start corrupting accountants. Here's a, here's a, a my accountant in a deposition. A legal deposition. Mark Cohen. You ready? Here's the question. I have emails that you have never met with Larry Schwartz. Would that be untrue? He objected. Because you met with them, didn't you? All I know is I had meetings with Larry Schwartz. Why is that important? Was Larry Schwartz was the accountant on the thing. On, so he knew that we settled with the IRS. So Schwartz was giving Cohen the information for the taxes. Well, I asked you, he said, did you recognize the documents? Emails that I was getting from you denied it. Perhaps it was a different meeting. Well, this meeting, particular meeting, it might have been the first meeting, very early meeting. 
Do you remember you asked Mr. Schwartz, why did he put that on the K-1? Meaning Cohen's question was, if we didn't have a hobby issue regarding the races, because we were a business, why was it on the K-1? This was Schwartz's answer to Cohen. Do you remember what he said? He said, yes. I said, what do you mean, yes? He said, the counselor told me to put it on the K-1. Now, who's the counselor? Walker. See? Because if you didn't put it in the, in the K-1, then the DRA wouldn't have a case, which is why the Banking Commission tried to change it. Remember? Follow the head when everything was redacted. We're going to get back to Dickhead in a minute. But do you remember the banking department, uh, Jerry Little, finding me? And I said, listen, they tried to change the notes, the classifications. This is why. Because those classifications would put them all in jail. Well, then what happened is they turn around and try to make the settlement because we got them. No, I don't have just one settlement offer. We'll put this one. This order was... Barrington. You remember me chasing Barrington on a couple different videos about the 50 million? It's the only thing that they won't deny because I have it signed in writing. But be careful of what they ask for here. You ready? They want it all proportionately. So they want to settle a suit, want all of them, knowing that the cases are organized crime. How do you do that? You leave one rat, the others out. Knowing that they can't do this, I, believe, I don't believe this sincerity. What they did then come back was, it was organized. We had to give them all releases. It would say, here's the thing, it would settle all little litigation. Meaning I had to give everybody a settlement. Now let's remember now, let's go back to the settlement. Again, who is asking for the releases, okay? So now you understand, they leveraged me, criminally, they turned around and wanted me to settle, offered me the 50 million. But this is who the releases are, Alex Walker. Well, he had dealt with the IRS and DRA. Hyder, he went through Hyder to give me the release. That's the document I showed you first. Maurice Gilbert and Sparkman, they worked for Divine Millimet on the IRS and DRA. Lauren, Larry Schwartz and Grant Thornton. Schwartz was the accountant and Grant Thornton was the company they worked for. Wow, see? We're still tax related. This is why I'm saying we can pierce their heart. Tim Powell of the IRS, he was in on it. R.P. Saunders and Bill Shaheen, they're who I brought the IRS first and they're the ones that created the leverage using Gene Shaheen, the senator, right? So let me see. In the companies, Williams and Connolly handled the tax returns. Divine Millimat handled the tax return. Banking department leveraged me and tried to change the, the tax returns. The Department of Revenue, they're the ones that were leveraging me. You see? So in other words, that those releases tell a story. Well, let's keep going into the story then. Then what I did was not take their deal and said, you know what, I'm going to put you all in jail. And I went to the criminal division of the IRS. That's right. And I met with a gentleman named Tom Morley. Now you're going to see this form, all right? And this form was a form that I wrote back to the agent in charge, O'Malley, after I met Morley. Mike Gill had a meeting in a plastic box with special agent Tom Morley from Boston and another woman who named she didn't give me. He asked me to write, to write because at the meeting, Agent Morley and the woman brought had refused several times to Mr. Gill, give Mr. Gill business cards. This is not in the third, it was my attorney writing them back. So they wouldn't give me their business cards. And this it turns out to be Morley. I am hopeful that someone in your office will provide us with the information, confirm that Agent Morley is in fact an agent for Titka. A confirmation that the woman accompanying Morley was also an agent for Titka. What I'm saying to them is that I'm a little nervous when they're not giving business cards. 
They wanted it to go away. They knew they were going to act criminally. The, the person was, was Tom Morley, right? And the person that we, they, he was responded to, you'll see here, is Tim Campus. Now what I want you to remember now, we'll put up that little, that when they forgot to hang up the phone, when I reported that Curtis Morley, the accountant that's been taking all this IRS information over the years, they forgot to hang up and they told us we had a mole. So what this means is, let's grab this now. It means the highest level, the criminal division of the IRS is acting corruptly. Wow. So that's the IRS. We got the Department of Revenue acting corruptly. We've got the banking department dead to rights. That's why everything was redacted, remember? We've got Alex Walker and Bill Shaheen and the law firms of Shaheen and Gordon and Divine Millamat. So let's start adding it all up. All right. So now, when I didn't take the deal, they sued me. The, the DRA. Now, who was it on there? Well, let's take a look. Richard Head, who worked previously for Divine Millamat and McLean. And the Divine Millamat lawsuit and the people offering me money included McLean Law Firm. So that means Richard Head out of the AG's office had conflicts all around. Not just Richard Head though. Elizabeth Leahy, who's the lawyer on the case right now, who if they're suggesting to auction off the property, except for guess who she worked for? McLean Law Firm. Let's even go further. You know the Supreme Court judge that kicked out the case? Even though the judge, Judge Anderson, right? Summary dismissal, no evidence, no witnesses. Just like Delker with Walker. Isn't that funny? None of them can have witnesses or evidence. You know where she came from? McLean Law Firm. Convoy. And she was the clerk for Judge Devine. Again, conflicts up and down. She just resigned. Or can you say, get out of Dodge? Now let's think what we just did again now. We just incriminated the Supreme Court in the state. We just got the AG's office. You know what about Elizabeth Hurley? We were sending the criminal information into Boston, I'm into Washington, Department of Justice. I was having Terry Lemieux. You're going to see a little receipt. You know what really was going to? Elizabeth Leahy. How's that? She was intercepting all our criminal information because they own Terry Lemieux. So we've got the AG's office, banking department, the IRS, the criminal division of the IRS, right? And the banking department would also give us a governor who knows exactly, right, Sununu? Because I told you. Another little clip. $15 million to be quiet. No, I had that. I put it on the, on the internet. You'd like to see it, Mr. Sununu? Would you like to see it? No, I didn't think so. So it's all there. Liberty International. Right. All I have to do is be quiet. But they're protecting the people that are killing our children. They own the treatment center. This is involved. This is the laundering of that money. Any questions? I didn't think so. I told Sununa right to his face, the drug laundering, this is why, and this is why they can't get into the banking department. It would give you all this. This is a model across the state and across this country in each of our states. It is corrupted, and they use the federal government to target us. Now, Let's see if we had a case. Remember? Anderson. Now this is going to get us the organized crime of the judges. I am telling you, this is a Rembrandt. If you're listening to it, it is a Rembrandt. Anderson needs to have a summary judgment at this point because he hung himself out to dry. They're bluffing. Any of you guys play poker? We're going to auction off your house. Go fuck yourself. How's that for bluffing? Right? That's why Anderson didn't take any information. That's why Anderson had the septic issue. That's why Anderson had Wiggins and Nori and then tried to get our money out of our account and a rest warrant. Because they didn't want me to tell you what's happening right here. They didn't want this video to be made. Now, you know why they can't take any evidence? 
Because I have here Eileen Hurley. She is a certified document examiner. Right. You're going to see all her credentials. I mean, since 1987, she is one of the country's foremost experts. You're going to love this. You know what some of her material was used as evidence? Judge Delker. No kidding, it's right here. I'll post that too. Right? Judge Tina Nadeau. Wow, remember that name. You know who she is? She's the one who assigns all the cases. Her family goes back 50 years with Shaheen. Why do you think we get Delker and Francois and Anderson? Nadeau. No, they used him too. They used her. Now listen, let's see what that signature on that tax return that made that DRA leverageable. She turns around and says, her conclusion, based on the evidence contained in this handwritten, it is my opinion of this document examiner to the greatest degree of professional certainty that Michael Gill of known material did not execute that signature on the questionable document above. And that document is the state DRA tax return right there. You see, they couldn't have me see it because I knew it would be untrue. That's why Cohen said it shouldn't be on the K-1. But Walker told him to put it there. Walker only told him to put it there to leverage me to get their releases. Even with 50 million, I said no. So in other words, this is proof, and it's also proof why Anderson can't have witnesses or evidence. And that's the same thing with Delker. You see? It would put them all in jail, including the judges. So let's just recap shortly what we've got. We've got the banking department. In, and I'm telling you, this goes on in every state. The AG's office, the cover team, in every state. We got them cold. We got an organization of corrupt judges and how they work coordinatedly. And not just in my state, but this is cinches it. The IRS, we only have them on tape. We only have them asking for a release. See, the DRA themselves? I mean, this guy Gilbert, who was on for a release, you know what he was prior? The supervisor, managing supervisor of the DRA. Right. This has been a years of an operation of cover-up. And we have them nailed. Nailed. We deal with them federally. We deal with the corruption through our courts, law enforcement. This breaks it down. This is indisputable. Why do you think the IRS isn't around? They hit me with every single hammer. Why not them? Because we caught them on tape. That's why. I'm going to put a little snippet of the attorney that we hired to deal with the DRA. His name was Neil Pike. Not only did he, it turn out that he worked previously for the DRA, how's that for a mole? He seemed to even forget that he was an attorney working with the DRA. You get to hear it. And then we find out that he was applying for the DRA for a job. You see, that's what they do. They bring in these moles and they promise them jobs. I think Mr. Trump called it play for pay. You know, right after I did. Right, and that's exactly what they do. Understand the importance here. We can get them all. Please share this video. Thanks. Did you do tax work for the mortgage specialist? You okay? I did work related to taxes, yes. Of course you did. Did you work with the DRA? No, I don't believe I ever worked. Did you work on information with the DRA? I don't follow your question. Did you do any work on my behalf or the company's behalf with the Department of Revenue Administration? I believe I communicated with them. You did? On your behalf, but I'm not certain to what extent. I believe. So you I did talk to the DRA? Yes. Okay. What was discussed? 
I don't recall the specifics. You don't recall the specifics of the DRA? Did we have a DRA issue, more specialist and myself? Yes. We did. What was it? I don't recall. You worked on it. Yes, I did. You talked to the DRA. Yes, I did. And you have no memory of what you worked on and what was said. I can only recall that it was a tax-related issue with the state. I don't remember the specifics. So, so you were working on tax issues for myself and the company. So when I hired you as a tax attorney, it makes sense, doesn't it, that you came on as a tax attorney, seeing you're doing tax attorney work? Yes, it would make sense that a tax attorney would do tax work. Okay. That you did. Not that A, you did. But you have no recollection with the DRA. I don't recall specifically what was discussed. Are you no. saying that you only had one conversation with the DRA? I'm saying I don't recall how many conversations I so had. So you might have had many. So you might have had many. I may have. Okay. So you could have had one or many, and in many, you still can't remember one conversation. I can't remember specifically one conversation, no. How about do you remember anything regarding all those conversations, you know, as a tax attorney representing me and my company, which the issue would have been in the millions. Is that correct, the issue in the millions? I don't recall. You don't even remember how much money we were dealing with? At this point, no, I do not. Oh, but at that point, did you? I can't really speak to a point in time that I don't recall. Well, I'm saying, if you're communicating quite possibly numerous times with the Department of Revenue, which you previously worked at, you have no recollection of anything? I don't recall specifically the communications I had with them at that time, no. Oh, you would agree you would have called them with a purpose. You're not calling them just for the heck of it. You must have been calling them with issues of myself and mortgage specialists, isn't that right? I've never made a personal call to the DRA while working at the mortgage specialist. Is that what you're trying to get wait at? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Did I say that you spoke or communicated through email, text, or phone call to the Department of Revenue. You said multiple times. Uh, is that correct? No, that is not correct. Well, then you're changing your testimony again. No, sir, I'm not. The testimony I gave is I do not recall. Well, wait a minute. You also said that I said if it was one time, could it be many? And you said it was possible that it was many. Yes, I did. So you did. So, so we've established that you were possibly had many calls or communication text messages with the DRA? There's a possibility I had more than one conversation with the DRA on the mortgage specialist's behalf, yes. Well, that was the question, so the answer is yes. Now, you wouldn't have called them unless you knew that there was an issue, right? I mean, you're working on issues. I don't know as though I ever initiated conversation with that organization. Are you saying they called you? I'm saying I don't recall. Oh, so you have no memory of making a call, receiving a call, right? This is correct. You have memory of an email to them, to you? Specifically, no, I do not. So we can say you have absolutely no memory other than it potentially could have been several communications. That is correct. You find that funny? I believe your phrasing of the question to be well, interesting. Inter well, it is interesting. So, you've had no other communications, written or otherwise, with the DRA? Since what point in time? I'm asking any time. Before I worked at the mortgage specialist? After? after? Uh, I may have applied for a position with them after leaving the mortgage specialist, but I don't recall. So, wait a minute. So you're saying that, that 
you applied for a job at the DRA right after I terminated you. Could you define right after? I'm sorry, I use your language of right after. So why don't you tell us? At some point after leaving the mortgage specialist, I may have applied for a job at the DRA. You might have. Yes. So you're not sure you did or not? I'm not sure at what date I applied. Well, I didn't ask you that. Not the date. You said you might have applied at the DRA. I yes. find that a little unusual, meaning either you did apply at the DRA or you didn't. Which one is it? I don't have that information on hand right now, but I could find it. So you might have not even applied for the DRA? After leaving the mortgage specialist? Yes. This is correct. So you might not have? Yes. Or you might have? Yes. Okay. So we haven't any memory previous about the DRA, and we don't really even have a memory if you applied for a job or not there. Right? This is correct. Wow. Okay. 